on my plane when I thought to myself, you know what? A movie with a snake in it would be kind of cool. I got something for you. Yeah. Whoa! Got a situation with the player. He wants to leave. Hey Zizu, where are we going, bro? We're going to my hometown, Marseille. Anything cool to do there? But of course, there's the snake zoo. There's a snake zoo? Ah! Anyone want to guess who I am? <laughs> well, something, boys, and welcome to Snakes on the Plane 3 episode. Happy Sunday, bros, and welcome to an incredibly controversial epi. It has finally happened. Dimitri Payet, since January 10th, was sent down to the U23s. Well, really, I guess it started out with him, I don't want to exactly say pouting, but I mean, I guess if you're a West Ham fan, I think that's exactly what he was probably doing. Since January 10th, he has refused to play. Bilic sent him down the U23s, just his attitude was all over the wall. Says it is family issues that he wants to go to Marseille, taking, I think, a pretty decent, uh, decent pay cut. He's been on 125,000. A pound a week since last February when uh, West Ham gave him that new offer uh, based on incentives based on the way he was playing um, so it looked like you know everything was fine up until January 10th and then things sort of turned uh, turned for the worse now a lot of people are pointing to the fact that West Ham haven't been playing very well you know it does it looks really shit wanting to leave a club that's not playing incredibly well now since January 10th however West Ham since the whole Payette thing has been going up uh, West Ham have actually been turning around quite a bit so you have that and if you want my honest opinion, man, like, look, I think West Ham, if you're a West Ham fan, yes, it's upsetting because he, he was a class player, very, very um, high caliber player that you had in your squad that gave you many, many great memories. Obviously, this season isn't going incredibly well for West Ham, even though they are in better form recently. But, you know what, take the money. He's almost, I think he's 30 right now, going to be turning 31, so he's getting up there a little bit in age. Possibly in the long run, West Ham are going to be better off. They're not going to do anything this season. They're not going to win the, uh, they're not going to win the, the Premier League this season. So better just take that 25 mil, invest it in some other transfer window opportunities. I think they already got Snodgrass for 10, and then there was one other guy. Basically what I'm trying to say is, even though it's a credibly shit situation, where you have a very, very talented player that played well for the club for so long, and then, um... And then it's just kind of going away in this, you know, like even some of the players, even some of the older players were turning on him. It just was a messy, messy situation. Better just take the money and invest it elsewhere. Dude, honestly, I should manage a club. Speaking of managing a club, I'll get into it tomorrow. Tomorrow's Weekend League episode is the craziest Weekend League episode you're ever going to see on my channel. If you guys do enjoy the episode, hit that like button. If you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button down below. And if you guys do want to interact with me on Instagram and Twitter, those links can be found in the description below as well. But like I said, a lot of young talent in Liga in right now, especially Especially for Marseille, let's look at the first player. Like I said, boys, a lot of young players, a lot of exciting young players in Liga and right now. And that's exactly what squad we're gonna put together today. And we're gonna start off with a beast Marseille keeper. You guys know and love him. It's Pele. Dude, 74 overall, 6'5. That's actually not that bad. Moving on, we're going with the Portuguese Pereira, one of the best right backs in FIFA period. I mean, look at these freaking stats: 88 pace, 80 passing, 80 defending, and 84 dribbling. Four-star weak foot as well, has high, high work rates. Moving on. Ah, you oh, get it, man. Man. It's ecstasy. Second center back is going to be Sertic. Now, let's be real. Let's be serious for a second here. I, I can't remember the last time I saw a silver player in FIFA that had all plus 70 stats. This guy is a groundbreaking player from a FIFA perspective. Has four-star weak foot, 82 long shots, uh, 78 long shots, 82 shot power. Moving on, we've got Patrice Evra, who it is no secret is also friends with Dimitri Payet. He is going to be going to Marseille as well. That transfer card is probably going to come out any day now. Patrice Evra, you guys know him, one of the best freaking Snapchat accounts I've ever seen one of the best Twitter accounts, just a social media guru, does a lot of stuff with Pogba. Speaking of social uh, social media, we're going with Matuidi, not for Marseille, but you have to include uh, Matuidi if you're putting together a league inside. One of my favorite players in the game, the only thing that lets him down is two-star weak foot, two-star skill moves. One of those things has to be increased. Even if they just gave him a three-star weak foot, that would be a massive improvement. Our second midfielder is going to be Lasana Diara. 77 pace, 81 defending, 77 physical, 73 passing, a very, very consistent card, 83 overall, the highest rated midfielder uh, for Marseille. And then we are going with the ex-Newcastle man himself, Remy Cabea. We are going with Alison Drini as our right winger. Is left footed, so it works out there. Four star weak foot, four star skill moves. Uh, Marseille, we're going to try and include as many Marseille players in this squad as possible. We've got Vafembi, uh, Vafatimbi Gomis, who I didn't think we were going to ever use in an epi, and then this came along, and uh, you know it was perfect opportunity. November version of his card, 65 pace, 80 shooting, goes up to uh, 
goes up to 78 79 i believe uh pace with the hunter chemistry style and shooting stats just go nuts with that and then the man of the hour is none other than dimitri payet we didn't do the spc which would have given us the cam which would have been cool for this episode because it's a blue card and marseille's uh marseille uh their primary color is light blue similar to the one from the spc but we are gonna have to make do with his Third 87 overall card in the game. Not only is his SPC 87, not only is his Scream card 87, but this is the best version of his card. The 87 overall in form got him for 117,000 coins, 78 pace, 83 shooting, 90 passing, 89 dribbling, and has the four star weak foot, four star skill moves. But anyway, boys, this is the Squad Boys Liga and Marseille side with a couple transfer players, as well as Alan Pardew back in France eating a delicious Coq Monsieur. Let's see how the boys perform. Match number one, we're coming up against Costa. Han, he's got Schneller Robbie. Hi, and this is my impression of when Shakira goes to wash her hands, but the water's too hot. What the actual sh? By the way, shout out Schweinsteiger. A goal and assist versus Wig Wiggum today. I don't think you can get informs for FA Cup performances, but Schweini played an absolutely inspired match. Gomis. Wait, no, Payet. Dude, I was looking. I passed to Payet. I was looking for Gomis 100%. <laughs> Freestyle. He's going to one of his former, like, I just, it just sucks leaving your friends behind. I've been part of, per, like, not professionally, like, when I was 15 years old, I played on a nice hockey team, and the one girl on our squad left us. She was our top goal scorer. Like, it just sucks to leave your friends behind. Like, does that make sense? Like, dude, it's just the cardinal sin. You just don't leave your teammates. Especially mid-season, bro. Like, you know, if there's a family thing going on that was, like, really, really dire, like, maybe we just don't know about it. Family comes first, I guess, but it's still a shit situation. Still knows how to bang him in on FIFA, though, that's for sure. Come on, boys. Payet! That fucking... What? And he's got tiger... He's got freaking tiger boots, too, boys. I know he's got 93 curb, but Jesus. As usual, the match starts out completely shit. We concede first. But since that first shot on target that went in for a goal... He's done absolutely nothing. 60% possession. We've had eight shots on target. Two of them converted. Two from distance with Payet outside the box. What do you say we make it a freaking hat trick, boys? What a save! Brilliant! That was a truly Pele-ish save. That was a save only a guy named Pele could make. That was our game. That was the game winner right there. Payet, come on, man. Gomez! 86 minutes, 3 2. Pushing that left. Fucking trash, kid. Hold the fucking left trigger down the whole game like a little queer. Run fucking sideways. Like a sweaty little bitch. <laughs> like a sweaty little bitch. Okay. Why you have to be mad? It's only game. Not saying shit now, dude. That, that's what I thought, Bebsicle. This guy was super mad, bro. But this guy was very, very upset, and it showed in his play. I had 15 shots, 12 on target, 6% possession. He said something about me going, like, diagonal or some shit like that. Something about me, like, playing, like, a diagonal. Run fucking sideways. Match number two, and we're coming up against another Schnilla Robbie. That Mbolo card. I'm not gonna lie to you. The most difficult card I came up against was a right forward, 7 chem, regular uh, Mbolo, scored four goals against me in a weekend league match. Was an absolutely crazy, crazy card. I couldn't stop it. Oh, hell yeah, dude. I got 12 players on the field. Let's go. Why do I make every game the most difficult version of the game that it has to be? Like, why? Wow. Does that happen to anyone else? Like, are you always 
Who usually scores first in your matches? Like, do you usually concede first? In game. Come on, boys. We have one shot on target, boys. What the actual shit? This is the greatest ever performance from a silver defensive side. Wow! How am I in this game? About the Tembi, bro! You had one job, dude. Um, what even is this, Khan? I couldn't possibly imagine what this guy's thinking in his head right now. You know what? I, uh... I would have felt pretty shit winning this game. Please let me have the... And I get the arrow. Wow. for the shorter episode um i've got to go pick my brother up he's getting back from thailand today so i've got to go to the airport in about an hour and a half time so i have to edit this really quick and then do an intro when i get back but um just don't have time for a third and fourth match for this particular episode so hopefully you guys forgive me for that if you guys did enjoy the episode hit that like button if you guys are new to the channel hit that subscribe button down below and don't forget to let me know how you feel about the dimitri payet situation whether or not you think he's justified going if there's family issues um or if you think that he sort of snaked out on west ham um, given that they weren't playing well in the Prem and uh, kind of is dipping on them mid-season. But anyway, boys, that's going to be the episode. Like I said, I will see you guys for another upload tomorrow. Till next time, tschüss, later, adieu.